Summer's coming, and you drive an old American car. What do you do about aircon gas? You can't get R12 anymore. So, a little bit of background about what we're going to do. Um, you can't get R12 anymore. It's uh, They've outlawed it in the UK. I'm not sure whether it's outlawed in the US. It's definitely outlawed in the UK, which is why in about 1996, 97, um, all air conditioning systems, particularly the ones in auto, auto vehicles, um, went to uh, R134A, which is supposed to be better for the environment. Um, for some reason, 134A at the minute has gone massively expensive uh, and you can only get it in the cans with the, um, the the leak stop in it, which I don't particularly want to be putting that in my motor, even though it's an old motor. So what the idea of this is, we're going to be using air duster. Now, air duster, you think to yourself, oh, you know, you can buy that in the pound shop. Yeah, you can. It's a pound. Um, it's 154A, R154A refrigerant, which is the same refrigerant as they now use in commercial um, refrigeration systems and the home ones, the ones that you get over door uh, systems and stuff like that. It's an environmentally friendly drop in replacement for R12 and R22, which are the two original uh, refrigerants that they used in vehicle air conditioning systems up until about 1996. Uh, it's also a drop-in um, replacement for R134A, so it'll mix pretty much with anything. Um, people say, though, you know, how are you going to get that in? Um, of course, it's got a spray cap. How are you going to get that into a vehicle air conditioning system? And you do it with one of those. Now, that is a side can puncture valve. So that enables you to um, get cans of refrigerant that are more common in the United States without a, a cock on the top. Uh, and it saves you having to put a, a, a cock tap on. Uh, you just um, puncture the side and use it. And then when it's used, um, you throw it away. Uh, simple. So that means that we can use our set of manifold gauges to put... Um, the gas into the air conditioning system. I don't always do that, or I don't ever do these, um, but it's a disclaimer. <laughs> do do any of this at your own risk. It's not the right way of doing it, but it works. Um, you know, would I do it in a, in a 40, 50,000 pound new car? Probably not. Uh, this is a 35 year old American import van. Um, with a leaking air conditioning system which is why it needs topping up regularly which is why i use air duster because it's cheap so you know if you want to do it do it don't do it and say oh yeah this bloke on the internet told me that i could yeah i'm telling you you can i'm not telling you that it's the right thing to do it just works so on your head be it do it at your own risk i've been doing it now for about five years never had a problem a uh, little bit of background about my knowledge of air conditioning uh, i didn't just learn it all off the internet um for five years about 40 years ago uh, i worked for a uh, an industrial um temperature controlled uh storage company um working mainly on on beer fridges and uh, cellar cooling um I'm not a qualified refrigeration engineer, but I've worked a lot with qualified uh, refrigeration engineers. I know the principles, they taught me what I needed to um, check levels and top up my own systems. And this is what I'm passing on to you. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hook up the gauges to this vehicle. We're gonna check the pressure. Uh, we're gonna 
if it needs topping up, which it does because it's starting to get a bit close and muggy um, and the AC isn't taking the edge off, um, we'll top it up and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, this process is the same whether or not it's an R12 system like this because this is a 1990 vehicle or a post-96 vehicle which is going to be 134A. Um, it'll be exactly the same, you'll just need an extra adapter which I don't use uh, on this vehicle because it's an R12 system there are 12 gauges. So we get hooked up, we'll check its levels and we'll get it topped up. This is what we're going to be using to put our gas in. We've got an old set of um, manifold gauges. These um, were only cheap and I've had them a while. Uh, they've got the R22, R12 set, uh, fittings on them. Um, you can get the adapters so that you can fit 134A systems, which are like a push fit, and then they've got a, a threaded shred of valve connector that they screw onto. Um, we've got our Natty um, side puncture um, can adapter. These you can get on I think this, I bought I think from eBay, uh, but it was a while ago. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them on AliExpress actually. I saw one of them listed on AliExpress. Uh, I'll put a link uh, in the description. Uh, and of course, our air duster, um, which is as we've uh, already ascertained it contains uh, drop-in refrigerant for R12 systems and R1348, R154A I think, um, does have a bitterant in it to make it taste horrible for obvious reasons, um, which is one of the reasons probably why people say don't use them in air conditioning systems. But the dryer in the AC system of this vehicle, or of any vehicle, will strip the bitterant out within a matter of seconds. So we'll get this punctured, we'll get it uh, ready to go, we'll set up, we'll check the pressure, and then uh, if it needs any, we'll top it up. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for two ports, high pressure and low pressure. The high pressure will always be on a thin line and the low pressure will always be on a fat line uh, or on a piece of equipment. So looking here, we've got, that's the low pressure. No, sorry, that's the high pressure and that's the low pressure. Usually has a cap on it as well, same as that, but this is a 35 year old vehicle. Somebody's lost the cap, but low pressure that's the one that we're going to be hooking up to and testing on. So we've got the gauges rigged up, these are just a, uh, a standard set of manifold gauges for an R12 system. They're quite old, um, but they still work obviously. You've got your two gauge, your two gauges, your low pressure side and your high pressure side. Low pressure's in blue, high pressure's in red. For the purposes of what we're doing now, um, we won't be using the red side, the high pressure side, just using the low pressure side. So the first thing that we need to do before we um, go any further is to check to see what gas is in the system. So we're going to connect the low pressure line, which is that one there our low pressure port which is that one there so if we just do that it's making a bit of a, a noise which tells me that there is pressure in the system screwed up oh, let me change hands Going on. That's sealed, and if we look up here now, 
cover this without the engine running it's looking about 35 there with the engine running um you would expect it to be sitting around about the 60 to 70 mark so we'll start the engine and we'll see where it is okay so we've got the engine started and we've got the ac system set to maximum cold so as low as it will go at maximum ac that way the air compressor pump the uh, ac compressor pump will be on and we're still sitting now about 35 psi so that's going to need some gas so we'll get the uh, the air dusty gas connected up and we'll get some gas into it right i'm gonna try and show you how i'm going to use this and puncture this can first thing that you do is remove that straw because you don't even need that we're gonna put the can in there close it as you close it it locks do it in one swift movement and it will be absolutely fantastic he says so you get it all in cool Square, ready to go, and that's it. Punctured it, ready to use. So we're going to connect that can. Bear in mind that this is refrigerant, so it's going to leak a little bit as we connect it up, um, and it's going to be cold. So just be ready for that. So we're all set up, we've got our refrigerant or our air duster connected up to our inputs which is the yellow, we've got our low pressure connected up down there and on our gauge up here it's showing 40 now, now that the engine's been running for a little bit. Both of these gauges are, uh, both of these valves are currently off, that one's going to stay off, closed because we don't need to do anything. Uh, this one we're going to open up now and let the gas start flowing into the system because the air conditioning system, uh, the, the pump is pulling it in and there we go, we're starting to climb up. Now if you look in the sight glass there, that's the refrigerant going in through the yellow and out down into the blue and it will just take a while now. You can hear that the engine notes changed probably, which is the air conditioning uh, working harder. We'll open that fully and we'll let that pull this can of gas into the system. Um, the normal operating pressure on an R12 system is between 60 and 70. If you use an air duster, which is a slightly different refrigerant, Going to be a little bit lower and anything between 50 and 60 i'm going to be happy with so you can still see that's bubbling through and going in so there's still quite a lot in that can you can feel that the can's getting cold which tells you that uh, refrigerant's going out because that's the basic principle of refrigeration and if we put our hand on top of that receiver dryer there that's nice and cold as well low pressure lines are getting cold as well and that one yet yeah, high pressure lines getting warm so that means that the AC is working right so we just need to wait a little bit longer for this can to empty it does take probably 10 minutes or so for the air conditioning to pull the uh, the can of air duster in it's quite warm today about 17 degrees so that helps if you're doing this on a cold day you need to drop this can of air duster into a bucket of warm water and that'll help it just pressurize and push in even though the uh, air conditioning system itself is pulling it in nicely 
So we can hold it in our hand as well, which uh, just warms the can up enough to uh, to let the pressure push it out and into the system. So we'll just let that fill and come back to it. Okay, that's been running for about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and it's now pulled it up to about 55 on that blue scale, which is where we want it. We give the can a bit of a shake. There's very little in there. It's taken it all in. And if we look in the sight glass, we can see yeah, there's a little bit going in, but not a massive amount. So that's now pretty much topped up. We go around to the inside. Yeah, that's blowing nice and cold, like icy cold. So that's that done. And that's that done for another couple of months until a bit more leaks out and I need to top it up again. Just thought I'd show you the empty can. There's the empty can with the hole that the, uh, the little tool makes in it. Uh, if this video has helped you out, then uh, give me a like and possibly a subscribe, because why wouldn't you want any more of this rubbish in your feed, eh? Uh, and any questions, drop them down in the, uh, in the questions, in the comments, and I'll try and answer them as and when I can. Stay cool this uh, summer for cheap. Thank you very much. See you next time.